Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be reviewing day number 12 of training camp practice for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you guys are new, go ahead and subscribe. If you are still enjoying these training camp review videos, go ahead and hit that like button and let me know down in the comment section below what your guys' thoughts are on training camp so far up to this point. Who has impressed you? Who has not impressed you? Let me know. I've been actually having a lot of fun reading the comments and uh, seeing your guys' thoughts and opinions, but without further ado, let's get started. We are still getting this information from pewterreport.com, Greg Allman, and Buccaneers.com. The players who were not at practice today are all the same names that you have been hearing, uh, but there are a couple of new guys. And Dominican Sue was not practicing today. I believe he was on a vet day. Donovan Smith was also still not practicing today. It is due to personal reasons. Uh, those have not been expanded upon. Robert Hainsey is still out, which was uh, kind of an interesting thing to see, as is Cam Gill, Cyril Grayson, and Quentin Bell. But with that out of the way, let's start getting into some of these training camp notes. I did forget to mention this yesterday, and that is my bad. It literally came up right after I finished uploading the uh, training camp review yesterday, but Shaq Barrett did say after practice that Joe Tryon reminds him a lot of a young Bradley Chubb. And you guys probably all know Bradley Chubb over in Denver. He is a very good young pass rusher, a former pro bowler. And for Shaq Barrett, of course, he's played with Bradley Chubb back in Denver. For him to be comparing Joe Tryon already at this point to Bradley Chubb, that's a great comparison. You love to see that. You love to see Joe, Joe Tryon just continue to get more praise uh, from both basically mentors of his in Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett and Bruce Arians giving him praise as well. Like, Joe Tron has a lot of things going for him. He has a lot of people saying a lot of good things, so it's very good for the first round draft pick here. But getting into some of the uh, other notes for today's practice, things were pretty physical today. Um, not There was some good physicality and then some not so good physicality. Uh, Ladarius Hamilton and Elijah Ponder actually got into a bit of a dust up, which is kind of interesting because uh, they're both on the uh, same side of the football, the defensive side. I'm not sure if they were, you know, duking it out with each other in an argument with each other, or if it was, you know, say two of them going against somebody on the offense. I have no idea. All I know is that Ladarius Hamilton and Elijah Ponder were both in some sort of uh, type of physical altercation in practice. And you know, a couple of punches were thrown, but it's nothing major. Guys, it's hot out there. It's football. It's a competitive thing. It's super, super physical. Yeah, guys get heated. Guys get mad. Maybe guys push each other a little bit. Maybe guys, you know, throw a punch here or there. We'll see if there's going to be any type of disciplinary action. I, I don't know if I would expect that, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, overall, it's not a big deal. It's nothing major. And uh, things like that do happen. But... Nate Brooks actually had a pass breakup on Chris Godwin today, and Herb Miller had a pass breakup on Scotty Miller. Now, Nate Brooks we've actually mentioned a couple of times here in these videos. That's nothing new, but Herb Miller finally kind of putting his name on paper, getting his name in the conversation for that fifth cornerback job. It's, it's a nice thing to see. I, I know going in to this training camp battle, a lot of people had already pegged Herb Miller as the guy who would probably end up winning that fifth cornerback job, but I feel like he's lost a lot of ground. I, I feel like that some guys have been making plays in other situations, whereas Herb Miller's name hasn't popped up a ton. He hasn't been making, you know, a ton of plays. Uh, he hasn't done anything super, super bad, but he hasn't done anything super, super good either. He's somewhere in the meh middle. So it was nice to uh, see Herb Miller making some plays there. Let's see if he can grow with uh, that little bit of momentum that he has given himself. Some more uh, wide receiver versus cornerback matchups did happen. We had Mike Evans versus Carlton Davis. Mike Evans won. Again, Carlton Davis was in good coverage. It was just a phenomenal throw by Tom Brady and a great catch by Mike Evans. I, I actually feel bad for Carlton Davis because the dude is good, right? He's good in coverage so far in this training camp. It's not like he's getting just absolutely blown out of the water um, and getting beat, you know, by like 100 steps. Like, he is staying with these wide receivers it's just Tom Brady being Tom Brady and these great wide receivers being these great wide receivers. You know, Carlton Davis is just a victim of circumstances, unfortunately. But 
We also had Antonio Brown versus Antonio Hamilton, the Battle of the Antonios, and Antonio Brown won. Uh, you know, not a knock against Antonio Hamilton here, but that would probably be the expected result is Antonio Brown winning. I mean, he wins against most cornerbacks in the entire league, so it's not a knock on Antonio Hamilton at all, but overall, I mean, hey, I think that's a good thing that they have Antonio Hamilton going up against Antonio Brown. That's great experience to get. It's a great way to improve Hamilton's game overall, and it also shows that they trust him um, and definitely want to experiment and see how he'll do against some of the better wide receivers on this football team. So good for Antonio Hamilton there. Continuing on the defensive side of the football, Anthony Nelson and Joe Tryon both combined for some good pass rush today on Blaine Gabbert, which did force a bad throw. Again, two young pass rushers that we've been talking about so much in these videos. They both have loads of potential, obviously Joe Tryon being the most recent first round draft pick and Anthony Nelson being a fourth round draft pick. It really makes you question, you know, will the Tampa Bay Buccaneers keep five edge rushers? Do they need to? I mean, right now as it stands, they've got very solid depth in both Nelson and Tryon. They might not need to keep that fifth edge rusher and can use that for another linebacker position, another cornerback position, another safety position, whatever shakes up in the special teams play. So overall, the depth for the Buccaneers edge rushing position has been very, very good so far up to this point with two guys who are still young. They've still got a lot of years ahead of them in the NFL, and maybe there's a future of this team's pass rush. Who knows? We will have to wait and see. But talking about some backup defensive linemen here, uh, we have Pat O'Connor, Khalil Davis, and Nacho, Raheem Nunez Rochez, who all made plays today, both in uh, some pass rushing opportunities, but mainly in run defense. We talked about Khalil Davis a lot. He is coming to camp looking real good and doing real good as well. He has been, you know, beating guys in 1v1s like Ali Marpet. He's been doing good in pass rush. He's been doing good in run defense. But in the case of Pat O'Connor and Raheem Nunez Rochez, we haven't mentioned either one of those guys a ton. I mean, we talked about Pat O'Connor a little bit. He was doing some stuff on some fake field goals. But overall, we've been talking about other backup D linemen like Khalil Davis, uh, like Jeremiah Ledbetter, and even a little bit of Sam Renner as well. And then Nacho, we just haven't mentioned at all. I mean, he really hasn't come up much. Him and Steve McClendon, shoot, we've even mentioned Steve McClendon more than Nacho. It's, it's just, you know, something that he hasn't been coming up on paper. He hasn't been coming up in the reports. But now he does finally get his time to shine. I believe his play was a screenplay that he had broken up, which is a good thing. And all three of these guys were celebrating after their own respective good plays. And it's a good thing to see, you know, the depth guys make some plays, get some momentum in their favor. And Bruce Arians talked about this, right? He had said like, hey, all of these guys from top to bottom on this defense have been playing well. And we have seen that in certain areas. Like I think some of the backup secondary guys have been playing good, especially the backup edge rushers and the backup linebackers have been playing good. And then certain guys along that backup D line have been showing up, but not every single guy. Now we're starting to see those other guys show up more, which is a testament to the overall depth on that defensive line. Joe Tryon came up yet again. He had a good play stopping Ronald Jones on the run. This rookie class has just been making plays all over the place. Uh, you know, just another quick note here. Jalen Darden was asked after practice how he feels about Bruce Arians, you know, giving tough love. And Jalen Darden said, you know, hey, I'm fine with it. I like it. It, it encourages me. It helps me out. I'm paraphrasing there. But this rookie class has a lot of good things going for them. They are getting heaps of praise both on offense and on defense. And it seems like they're all starting to find their niches, right? They're all starting to find their spots on the roster, what their roles are going to be going into the upcoming season. Joe Tryon being one of them. And uh, yeah, it's just it's all really, really good stuff to see. Also, speaking of Jalen Darden, he did continue to make some very good catches today. Uh, he had a touchdown catch from Tom Brady on Friday, which he said after practice was epic, so that's good. And uh, he just continued to do Jalen Darden things, so good job for the young rookie wide receiver there. Now, Ryan Suckup. Let's talk about Ryan Suckup, right? Today was a much better day of kicking. He actually went 6 for 7 on field goals on the day, the only miss being a Jamel Dean block. Good improvement. I, you know, I told you guys there was that little nugget of fear, that little nugget of worry. It might still be there, but it's been repressed a little bit with a practice like this. So 
good for Ryan Sickup to get, you know, rebound, get back on track, really start making his kicks again because we need him to. We definitely, definitely need him to. I saw some people joking in the comments saying, it's okay, James, we'll be scoring touchdowns. We won't need to kick field goals. Everything will be fine. Well, uh, now hopefully, uh, you know, when we do need to kick field goals, hopefully Suckup can make them. Again, aren't, is not, I'm not super worried about it, but, you know, there was that little little feeling of like oh no but it has been a little bit suppressed now with a day like today as i mentioned the physicality of practice was worth noting guys are starting to hit harder both in the secondary and in the linebacker core we talked about that for a couple of days now and the intensity is increasing so this of course isn't anything to worry about it's nothing where everybody should say oh no somebody's gonna get hurt no it's nothing like that guys aren't out there trying to hurt each other they're just getting closer to game time. They're getting more amped up. They're getting more intense. Like, they're all ready to go just as much as uh, we in the fan base are as well. So, yeah, that's where you see that intensity. That's where you see that increase in physicality because guys are getting ready to go. I mean, in those joint practices, man, that that is going to be a very physical couple of days there. And I think that intensity will also be very high as well. And then finally, guys, one more thing to note here, Giovanni Bernard and Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones as well, all three of them, uh, they all had a good day running the ball. Ronald Jones had a flip into the end zone on the goal line for a touchdown. Giovanni Bernard had a very good run eluding a tackle from Devin White, and then Leonard Fournette had a good long run as well. I do want to say Leonard Fournette did get stopped at the goal line, unfortunately, but overall, all three of the running backs did a very, very good job today. We'll see where that battle continues to grow. I mean, I really don't know who has the... I mean, honestly, if you want to say who has the edge overall, you'd probably say Giovanni Bernard. But in terms of Ronald Jones versus Leonard Fournette, uh, probably still Ronald Jones at this point. But honestly, guys, at this during this point in time right now, Giovanni Bernard might just have the whole three-down back thing. Who, who knows what the coaching staff is thinking? It's going to be very, very, very interesting to see how those starting running back snaps shake up because I feel like Giovanni Bernard is making the case more and more every day to just say hey why don't we just give this guy all three downs worth of snaps so who knows how it'll shake out let's wait and see but anyway guys what do you think about all of the training camp notes that I talked about today let me know down in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream but until then and as always guys goodbye for now and go Bucks.